So as a final appendix to talking about operators, I figure I would walk you guys through kind of the last interesting thing you can do that are still considered in the domain of operators and operator overloading. I know that this operator overload stuff has been probably very hard um, to absorb for somebody who's never seen it before, but I do promise the more you mess with this stuff, um, the more it starts to become natural to you and you start to realize how just really powerful uh, doing stuff like this is. So as a final example, I'm going to start talking about or just give you a very brief example of what an implicit conversion is and how that might assist you. So I've kind of created this mock scenario here, kind of like, you know, an example of something that, that implicit conversions might help you with. And, and let me just kind of walk you through that. So let's assume for sake of argument that we've created a class called encapsulated int. And let's also assume that it basically can do everything an int can do. I've only provided a, you know, a very small subset of that for the sake of example, but basically you can create one of these with an integer as an argument. Um, you can add two of them together. You, like I said, you can assume um, that this is, can do everything else. So I, I provided the the, um, the addition plus operator here, but you know, let's assume that there's more in there. Um, but basically the idea is that this class is encapsulating an int and maybe for sake of argument, maybe I want to make note of every single time I, I, I add two of these things together, maybe I want to add that to a counter so I can keep track of the number of additions that I've made with this class. Like I said, it's a silly example, but it helps, you know, it helps at least prove my point. So I'm going to create one, uh, two of these things. They're both going to start out as zero. Well, maybe I'll make the second one equal to 10. And basically I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to add two of them together. So I'm going to say A plus B, like so. And then I'm just going to make sure that my code is really working and the number of additions is set to one because I've used that plus operator once. So let me just run this. I believe I, so I don't know if I've mentioned this during the constructors video or not, but when you create one constructor, you have to define the default constructor as well if you still like to use it. Okay, so I get one as I expected, and you know, I don't want to harp too much on this, but if I was to maybe do it a third time, uh, I would get something like two in here, because I called the constructor, or I've called that, um, addition operator twice. So long story short, this works the way you would expect. Maybe I will put this back. So what exactly is an implicit conversion? An implicit conversion allows you to do something that normally wouldn't be expected to work by default um, with, with a specific class type. So what I'd like to do in this case is because this thing is encapsulating an int, there are going to be some cases where I just want to get the integer directly out of it. I can think of two of them. The first one might be something as simple as int i equals c. Maybe I want that to work. And a more um, complicated, slightly more complicated, would be as if I were to pass it in as a function argument that took an integer. Maybe I would like... Maybe I would like to be able to pass it in as an argument without having to, you know, get the integer out of it. So maybe something like this. I'd like both of those to work, and I'd like them to work as written. I don't want to have to do anything special to get the integer out of them. Well, if I try to build that right now, it's going to say there's no viable conversion. It's going to say you cannot convert from an encapsulated int to an int, but basically because you have, you told the compiler you don't know how. Same thing for this. It says there's no function um, that takes an argument of encapsulated int. You pass C which is of type encapsulated int, and Funk is expecting an int. So how do you make something like this work? Well, that's where implicit conversions come in. Essentially, typecasts are seen by C++ as an operator type. So if I was to declare something called operator int, believe it or not, this, is a, um, this operator acts as a typecast to int, and it can be actually done automatically unless I put the explicit keyword in here, which I don't even have syntax highlighted because it's not commonly done. I think it's a C++, one, uh, C++ 11 feature. But basically, by defining what operator int is, it basically allows me to determine what happens if this thing gets casted to int. And in this case, I'm just going to return i. Now you'll notice that this entire program builds exactly like you would expect. I get 0 plus 10 plus 0, which is c. 
which goes into i and also gets passed in as an argument to func and func is finally able to print it out. That last thing right here, this two, is just the same thing as you know the number of additions. So don't let that confuse you. So this is basically in the briefest amount of time possible explanation of what implicit conversions are. And this can be anything. You can put any type in here. So you can allow um, conversions to float automatically and, and, and conversions to some other class type. Basically the sky's the limit. So um, that is a very brief explanation of what uh, implicit conversions um, via operator overloading are. So uh, moving right along to the next video.